not so much as a kid, you know, um, in my neighborhood where we're at, we didn't really have much art classes. Um, I think with, I was really kind of exposed to it through, I don't know, I was just, as a kid, since I was like two years old, there's like drawings of mine and my mom, my mom still had, like keeps them, you know, she's archived like all these drawings that I did. And, um, and at school I was always doodling. And my dad, he was a, he's a car painter. Well, he was a car painter, now he's a teacher. And um, so I always had that kind of exposure about arts. And I guess through him it was custom work. You know, he didn't he didn't really do the custom work, but he was around the culture a lot. You know, I guess like Hot Rods, Low Riders, and Harley Davidsons, and all that. So, you know, by the time I was nine, he bought me a, a airbrush, and then my grandpa got me an Exacto kit when I was like nine or ten started cutting stencils very young um, and then in sixth grade I had a teacher Mr. Monroy that he was really about like he was really about ancient uh, civilizations like the Aztecs, Mayans, the Egyptians and all and he was really about it you know he would take a, go to summer and spend it in Egypt or go to Mexico and and, and uh, he'd always bring gifts for the kids like I, I you know I have a piece of papyrus with like an alphabet and all that, that kind of stuff and, and he also would have like uh, after school he would have he would build like models of pyramids out of cardboard and all that and, and paint them with like really nice like sculptures and so I was always that was when I was introduced to uh, like seeing that as my ancestry you know like the indigenous people of the Americas and all that but also in the sense of it being artwork you know and, and so my identity in a way like having that that uh, identity crisis of like my parents are both Mexican, my family everyone's in Mexico, everyone's on the Mexican side, and I was the only I was the first child of my family to be born in the, in the states, you know. But I was ten minutes away from the border, and so um, when that happens, like, you become very attached to your identity because you're like, oh, I'm living in a different country, even though I was born here, I didn't feel like it was my country. I thought uh, Mexico was my parents' country, so it's my country. And what I loved about it was the culture. You know, what I loved about it was the Aztec calendar and the Mayan calendar and all the pottery. And um, that's what I dug about it. And so, in that sense, I was very exposed to art as far as like, artesanía. You know, like, uh, like I guess folk art or indigenous art. Oh, I don't know. That was a. I think I was very young. You know, I, when I started noticing it. Um, later on, I think I became more, I guess, officially conscious, but, um, I, I think I was very young when I hated the border, started hating the border, you know, maybe like six, you know, seven. Uh, I don't understand why, you know, when I had to go visit my grandma, I had to watch, like, cross a fence. And I did that almost back, this is before 9-11, so you can cross pretty easy, rapidly, but... I can come back, I could come in and go out, but my cousins couldn't, or like my family couldn't, and I didn't like that, um, and I didn't understand it either, you know, and then when I began to understand why that happened, I didn't agree with it, I was like, this is bullshit, you know, but, um, it was, it was really through music, uh, you know, Rage Against the Machine, talking about, you, you know, the Zapatistas, or, even just, um, you know, People of the Sun was really something that spoke to me or, or you know, when the disc leaves on the fire and it was like, you know, Michael Moore directed it. That, Public Enemy, Tigres del Norte had a lot of political songs. In college, like, at the end of, like, at the end of high school, like, I was listening to Immortal Technique. It was more on the angry kind of side of things, but it was, you know, conspiracy theories and all that kind of and I, I, um, I don't know, I gravitated towards that. I thought it was interesting. But then eventually, you know, 1070 passes in, in Arizona, which is the immigration law, and then I became involved. Um, Zach Rocha also got me involved in that. He was the one that really pulled me into to actually doing that. You know? um, so, yeah, I don't know. It's always been, I think I've always been somewhat, like, politically aware. Definitely indigenous, um, definitely, you know, psychedelic rock posters. I love it. I love the colors. I love the patterns. 
Um, and I think more of my newer work, you can start seeing that even the colors, I'm switching it up. A lot of my, my posters up to this point have all been like very southwestern looking colors, burnt you know, oranges and turquoises and tans and browns. Now it's getting more like this new, this is like my print, my first print that comes into this new era of like really turning up the, you know, almost borderline neon colors, you know, and it's just kind of part of my, in the point I am in my life, that's kind of what I'm headed towards that for some reason. It's like high co high color and, and like, this image is, it's it's from a most deaf lyric and the lyric goes, um, I see a new day coming, it looks just like me. Um, and I like that because it's like you can see yourself in the future, you know, like you can, you have some kind of a vision of where you're going. So that's why I wanted her to hold flowers and looking off into the future. She's looking far into the future and she's holding flowers and she's greeting the future, you know, like here, like nice to meet you future and like, and it's like a sign of respect and also a sign of like excitement towards the future. But. I think in the image there is that sense of like even in her eyes there's that sense of like not weariness but almost like aware that you're going to you're doing who knows what you're doing like there's that uncertainty in it and I wanted the colors to be really bright because I hope for a bright future you know and, and this is like a very universal thing when you're like in a in a rite of, almost like a rite of passage you're switching you got you're, you got a fork in the road you're gonna see which way you're going or there's like a new era in your life like it's pretty it's kind of universal that it's it's a big deal, you know, and, and I wanted and I wanted to make a piece of this, you know, because I think that's something that's very that people go through, you know, and and and, um, and I think the way that I've been able to deal with it is just kinda like kinda laugh at, at observations or just kinda like, you know, Carlin said, you know, this is a the, you, like, the, when you when you're born on Earth, you got a tickets to the freak show, you know. And if if you're born in the U.S., you got the front row seats. So, and and so that I, I don't know. I I kind of just look around and and just trip out on on the country, you know. But I don't let it bother me where I can't work anymore, or I can't, or I'm angry, or like I spaz out out of nowhere because of it anymore. You know, I don't want that's not happening to me anymore.